Hello again, and welcome to Advanced Physics for High School Students. This is Lesson 59, and it is entitled Resonance, Standing Waves, and Beat Frequency. This lesson is in three different parts. Your authors have chosen to put three very large topics together, all of them related to each other, and we'll take them one by one. The first topic deals with resonance. Some of you have perhaps seen the film of the Tacoma Narrows bridge collapse. I would like to show you a clip of that bridge that was built in the 1940s and collapsed shortly after it was opened in the state of Washington. This shows you some of the details about this bridge, its length, its width, how tall it was when it was constructed. During the construction phase of the bridge, you can see a cross section here of a solid girder that is holding the bridge. The bridge was carefully designed and was well built, but even during the construction, some vibrations were observed. On opening day, people crossed the bridge and then began to notice the unusual vibrations. The bridge vibrated for about three months, was referred to as a galloping girdy. However, on one day, the bridge actually went into a torsional or a twisting sort of motion. These are shown in real time here with a period of vibration of about five seconds. There's a car that is located on the roadway during the vibrations. This automobile was abandoned by its driver. No people were killed in this accident, but there was a small dog that was trapped inside. You can see the driver of the car making his way in along the nodal point, the center line of the bridge, as he tries to escape from the car. He tried to rescue the dog, but the dog bit him. The bridge vibrated violently in this mode for about an hour's period of time before it eventually collapsed. The vibrations were captured on film to be studied later and these studies were done at the California Institute of Technology and have been used to help design better bridges, suspension bridges with long spans. The center span collapsed after this violent motion. The bridge was eventually rebuilt. It was redesigned and there are in fact a pair of twin bridges that stand across Tacoma Narrows now. And those bridges are don't show the sort of vibration that this particular bridge did. Anytime a mechanical system vibrates violently like this, or even some mechanical systems that are designed to vibrate, we say that they're undergoing something called resonance. So let's define what this is. The definition for resonance is a phenomenon exhibited by a physical system acted upon by an external periodic driving force in which the resulting amplitude of oscillation of the system becomes large when the frequency of the driving force approaches one of the natural oscillation frequencies of the system. 
Let's take this definition piece by piece and see what it, we mean by the resonance in the case of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse. It is a phenomenon exhibited by a physical system. In the case of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, the physical system was the bridge itself. The fact that you had these towers that are upright, you had this concrete motorway that was built on these stiffening I-beam girders, the suspension cables that were along the sides to hold up the roadway. This was our physical system. It's acted upon by an external periodic driving force. In this case, the wind was blowing across the bridge and caused the bridge to vibrate as if a reed that was on an, a reed instrument, such as a clarinet or a saxophone, is caused to vibrate. The resulting amplitude of oscillation of the system becomes large when the frequency of the driving force approaches one of the natural free oscillation frequencies of the system. So what happens is all physical systems have natural frequencies at which they'll vibrate. Any bridge that you cross, whether it's the Veterans Bridge that crosses the Tennessee River or some other bridge, whether it's a chair you're sitting in or a table, a tuning fork, a musical instrument, all physical systems have natural frequencies. And when I bang on the system and then let it go, the system is going to vibrate. And the frequencies at which it naturally vibrates are called the natural free oscillation frequencies. So now if I periodically drive this system at one of those frequencies, then I'm going to get large oscillations. There are two physical systems that you ought to know what the natural frequencies are. They're for a mass on a spring and for a simple pendulum. And let's remind ourselves of what those formulas are for the spring and the pendulum. If I have a mass M that is attached to a spring of stiffness K, then this mass will naturally vibrate at a frequency that's given by F is equal to 1 over 2 pi, the square root of K over M. That's a formula that you should memorize if you have already. For a simple pendulum of length L, then the frequency of free oscillation is 1 over 2 pi square root of G over L. It does not depend on the mass. It does not depend on the amplitude. This is another formula that you should have memorized. I'd like to show another example of resonance. This is of a different mechanical system than Tacoma Narrows Bridge. This is a military, military helicopter that had experienced some problems pre previously, uh, and it is showing resonance as a result of one of the rotor blades actually being off balance. And you can see that resonance can cause the thing to tear apart. This test was done on purpose to show the effects of resonance. Here's that same helicopter test done showing a rear view. You can see that resonance phenomenon can be quite destructive if unchecked. There's another film clip of a resonance phenomenon that I'd like you to see, and that is of a crystal glass being shattered by a human voice. This is how tried to do it. It is a crystal wine glass. You know, when you and rub your finger along the top, it's a good, expensive, big, heavy type glass. Now, it's to do with the resonation. You know, I get my voice to hit that exact pitch. And when the glass starts resonating and vibrating, like we you use your finger, you know, I build up that resonance. And if you're loud enough, boom, it'll blow up. <laughs> Is it supposed to be that easy? It's all time. This myth needs vocal power, but forget opera singers. Adam and Jamie have gone for full power. The power of rock singer Jamie Ventura. You heard the story that it's possible to break a wine glass with a human voice. Uh, actually, I have. Uh, one of my vocal teachers, uh, a man named Jim Gillette from a band called Nitro, uh, has done it for years, uh, back in the 80s. So I know it can be done.
makes for a world first. History's been made, and it's been captured on high speed, so there's really no need to try this one at home. So just to recap, we've seen here three film clips, or film clips of three different phenomena in which we have seen resonance occur. We've seen the Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse, We've seen ground resonance of a Chinook military helicopter, and we've seen, seen the shattering of a wine glass using a human voice. All of these are examples of destructive resonance, but there are also examples of things that have desirable effects, and these deal with musical instruments. We're going to focus our attention on these constructive, these desirable resonance effects during the rest of this lesson, and in order to do that, we next need to talk about standing waves. You may recall from earlier classes the discussion of standing waves. We actually saw an example of standing waves when we had a string tied to two posts and one end of the string was vibrated and these waves that were created had a pattern that appeared to remain stationary in place. We called the places of large vibration antinodes and the place where there was very little vibration nodes. In this lesson we want to describe what a standing wave is and how it's developed and then how we can use it to help us to solve problems specifically that involve vibrating strings and vibrating air inside of pipes. So let's define first a standing wave. A standing wave is an interference phenomenon resulting when reflected waves interact with incident waves of the same amplitude and frequency or wavelength, producing a regular pattern of destructive interference, which is where the nodes are, and constructive interference, which is where the antinodes are. This pattern appears to stand still. The antinodes don't shift their position and the nodes don't shift their position. There's an animation that shows this pretty clearly. In this this animation, we see that there is a green wave which is traveling to the right and a blue wave that is traveling to the left. These two waves traveling in opposite directions interfere with each other and the red wave is the envelope of that destructive and constructive interference. What we see here is that the place where the destructive interference occurs is the node, and the place where the constructive interference occurs is the antinode. Let's stop the animation in which these waves now happen to be at the point where destructive interference is occurring. Now, as we step through this, the green wave travels to the right while the blue wave travels to the left. When they overlap crest with crest and trough with trough, then we end up with constructive interference. And so we have a place where there's a node in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven locations, and we have antinodes at one, two, three, four, five, six locations. As we continue to step through and the waves continue on, then there comes another point at which the two waves, the green wave and the blue wave, are out of phase with each other. During that part, there is destructive interference happening all along the string. But as we continue, then we see that the waves will continue traveling, and I get the nodes and antinodes showing up again. So again, playing this animation through, we see the resulting pattern in the red of these incident waves, say the waves that are in green traveling down to the right, and the reflected waves, those traveling in blue from the left. There are two important systems, strings and air vibrating in tubes, that we want to consider, and we're going to look at strings first. In a lot of this, we're going to see that we're going to be dealing with stringed instruments. Let's think about a string that has an unvibrating length of L. This might be one of the strings on a guitar. Say maybe it's the D string. This would be the distance between where the string is fitted on the nut up at the top end of the guitar and where it crosses the bridge at the bottom end of the guitar. Now let's suppose that we pluck this string and let it vibrate freely. What kind of pattern appears? Well, here's the pattern that appears. The string's going to vibrate up and down with nodes at each end and an antinode in the middle. This length of string has the equivalent of half a wavelength of length of this wave. 